Hi everyone, what I have on my desk right here is a Hall Effect sensor. And about a year ago I made a video about it, it was a very popular video. Um, in fact I remade it uh, a couple of weeks ago because the original one, the quality was quite poor. So I remade this video about how to measure DC current using a Hall Effect sensor. Um, for those of you who don't know, this thing's called an ACS712 Hall Effect sensor. And what happens is you wire this thing into a circuit and it gives an analog voltage out which um, which runs in line with the amount of uh, current that flows through it. So it gives a voltage out proportional to the amount uh, of current which flows through the circuit. And it basically works on the principles of magnetism or the relationship between magnetism and electricity. Um, but yeah, so that's what the thing is. Now, I had some questions. Um, quite a few people have been asking, you know, the thing works with DC current, but what about I, um, AC? How do you measure AC with this thing? And that's what this video is going to be about. So, there's something quite important which I need to go through in order to be able to explain, uh, you know, how to, use, how to use this thing to measure AC current. So, let's try and keep this uh, quite straightforward. Let's create a graph here. So this thing is going to represent DC current. So let's say we had, um, I don't know, a 12 volt uh, car battery and we had a load of 12 volt bulbs and we turn them on, put them in a circuit and we run it through the Hall effect sensor and the amount of current which was flowing through was say 5 amps. So 5 amps. And let's also say that this amount of time here is a thousand milliseconds from there to there. So we have five amps flowing through. Now if you were to get this thing and and measure it, maybe here for example, right there, the result that you would get, the analog result, would be relative to five volts, uh, sorry, five amps. So maybe for example, I mean, I can't remember the exact uh, figure, I think it was something like, it would give out 66 milliamps, uh, sorry, millivolts per amp, if I remember rightly, something like that. So, you know, whatever it is, you'd get that output uh, through the analog out pin. And if you were to take a sample here, you'd still get the same result here on the analog out pin, which is relative to 5 amps. If you were to measure here, 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 whatever, uh, it's a battery, they are bulbs, um, providing that the battery's not going flat or whatever, and this thing's taking 5 amps, you'll get a result uh, relative to 5 amps. And with DC, it's fairly easy. And, you know, if you're interested in that, have a look at my tutorial about how to measure DC current using this thing. Anyway, so how do we measure AC current? Okay, now AC... AC is very, very different. So if I draw a, a chart here in the H shape. So let's look at a wave. Now this isn't going to be a thousand milliseconds, but let's look at a wave. Or we might add two waves in or something. Yeah. Now, in the UK, we get 200, uh, 250 volts, uh, 50 hertz. And 50 hertz means uh, 50 waves per second. So if we just uh, draw some arrows there, so the uh, duration of that wave is 20 milliseconds. So 1,000 divided by 50 is 20, 20 milliseconds. So there is a wave every 20 milliseconds. And of course, 50 waves per second, 50 hertz. So uh, with DC, what we did is we just took, we could take a sample anywhere. And if we take a sample, say, once a second, it will be fine. Because like I said before, if we have 12 volts here, and we have a consistent amount of amperage, it will work because the voltage won't change, you know, the amperage isn't going to change. Um, so we could take a sample anywhere here, once a second or so, and it would be fairly accurate. But over here, what do we do here? So if we have uh, 50 of these waves in one second, and you take one sample throughout the whole second, well, where will your sample fall? I mean, you don't know, do you? It could, it could fall. It could fall here. Let's say it will fall here. So we'll take a sample once per second, and it just happens to fall there.
but what's going on there? Let's have a quick look. I mean, basically, we don't know. So let's have a look. Let's draw the wave. And where does our sample fall? It falls right there. So in our case, if this thing gives, say, 66 millivolts per amp, how many amps will, how many millivolts will it return? Well, right there, that's the zero volt mark uh, or point. So it will return, return zero volts because at that point there's zero amps flowing through it. So if we were to take samples, we could fall on that point and it would be a complete waste of time. So um, just to go a bit more in depth with this now, um, you can only get current when there's a voltage. So if there's no voltage, there's no current. And the more voltage there is, potentially, the more current there can be. So over here at the peak, and actually the trough as well, so the peak and the trough, um, potentially the amount of current we could be drawing would probably be like that. So the more voltage there is, potentially the more current that you would be able to draw. So it really matters exactly where we take a sample. And basically what we can glean from this is that unlike DC where everything's stable and kind of linear and doesn't really move a great deal, we could take a sample once a second. With AC we've got absolutely no chance. So if we were to take a sample once a second it would be a waste of time. So what do we have to do with AC current? What do we have to do to measure AC current with this thing? Well to start with, like I said earlier, there are 50 waves per second. So 50 hertz. 50 waves per second. And what it means is that, like I said earlier again, there's a wave every 20 milliseconds. So every 20 milliseconds. And we need to be able to map out or measure the whole wave. If we don't measure out the whole wave or be able to map out the whole wave, we've got no chance of being able to find out anything about this, this circuit or the amount of currents flowing through it. Because like I said earlier, we could measure here and think, all oh, right, that's the amount of current, but it's not, you know? So what it means is we need to take lots and lots and lots of samples. So if there's a wave every 20 milliseconds, it wouldn't even be sufficient to take one sample every 20 milliseconds. And towards 20 milliseconds is a very, very short time. But for electronics, and particularly to be able to measure a wave which is 20 milliseconds long, even taking one sample every 20 milliseconds is just not enough. So if we were to take 10 samples every, every 20 milliseconds, or every 2 milliseconds, then what would we get? We'd get... Um, we get five sample. Well, most likely we get five samples of the uh, the positive part of the voltage, and we probably get five samples of the negative part of the voltage. Would that be enough? Well, I don't know. I mean, we get one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. If we miss the peak and the trough, we're not going to get accurate results. So, really, even taking ten samples over one wave is not enough. So let's take 20 samples over one wave. So now we get 10. So we get 10 samples per uh, half, if you like. So we get 10 samples of the minus and 10 samples of the plus. And that will now be sufficient. OK. So now let's say we've got 1,000 samples, which we've taken in a second. And what have we got? Well, we've got something like, I don't know, if this was 10 amps at the peak or whatever, we'd have 660, 660 millivolts output from the output of this thing into the Arduino. And then we'd have something else, lower, 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 and then we'd have 330 millivolts, which represents about 5 amps. And then we'd have more values, and then we'd have 0 millivolts, which represents 0 amps. And then we start going lower and lower and lower until you get to minus 660 millivolts, which represents minus uh, 10 amps. And it's not incredibly useful because if we were to get all those samples and find the mean, we'd add them all together and divide by the amount of samples. So if we were to add all of these values together, divide by 1,000 because there's 1,000 samples, we would get zero. And from, the, uh, from this thing here, we'd get zero uh, millivolts, millivolts, 
and then we do our calculations in Arduino to make out the amount of amps which would be zero amps. So basically at the moment that doesn't work as it is. And what this leads to is there are two different methods in order to get this to work for AC. Uh, there's method one and of course method two. Method one is something called RMS and RMS means root mean and square and basically what it is it's a calculation that you do with all of these values even the minus ones you do this calculation you perform this calculation on them and it gives you an amount of average voltage as a plus number not a minus number so yeah uh, so for example with um, with mains with mains um, AC voltage in a, in a house the peak voltage is actually somewhere near 300 the trough is minus 300 but the RMS voltage is about 250 and basically uh, this is how it works RMS so the first way of doing doing this thing is RMS now I'm not going to mention too much about RMS because I did a video on it about two weeks ago or so and I covered it in quite some depth there but that's the first method so if you were to get all these samples you've got all these samples here and you now want to calculate the uh, average millivolt uh, output from this thing you could use RMS and then from RMS you do the, um, the calculations according to the uh, spec sheet of the ACS712 and it would work so the second method um, is quite different the second method is a number called well so it's not really called but it's 0 0.70 Seven. and in terms of AC voltage this is a very special number um, so this second method is a lot easier but it's not as accurate so the second method how do we do it well where we took a thousand samples before in a second in order to uh, trace the wave if you like um, well we're going to discard all of the minus ones straight away so all this minus 350 mil 300 millivolts minus 660 whatever if it's lower than zero discard it straight away and then what we have to do is we have to go through all of these numbers and we have to find the peak so you know we've got a picture of a wave we need to find that point there the peak well you could actually use the trough but we're not doing it that way we'll do it by plus numbers and what it means is basically you discard all of these numbers too so the only number we're after is the peak. So you get the peak, which I don't know, in this case, I've got for representing 10 amps or something at the peak. So we get our number, 606, oh, I've done that again, 660 millivolts. And then we multiply it by 0 0.707. And what this will do, I'm not going to do it on a calculator, but what it will do is it will give you an equivalent to the RMS. So yeah, it will be a lower number obviously because you multiply it by something that's lower than one so uh, 660 millivolts uh, multiplied by 0 0.707 and it will give you a value lower which will I don't know, probably be about 500 millivolts or so and that will basically equate to what the RMS voltage would be roughly so the RMS voltage of a wave is roughly about there um, yeah so um, so that's how to do it. So you'd get this this uh, amount of millivolts here from the output uh, of this thing, obviously processed in the Arduino, and multiplied by 0 0.707, you get the number, and then you do uh, the stuff which is in the uh, spec sheet and whatever, and basically you, you divide that by 66 millivolts, and it would give you the amount of amps. And um, as far as theory is concerned, that is how to measure AC current uh, using one of these um, ACS712 Hall effect sensors. Um, so there you go. So in the next video, I think I'll actually show you this thing for real with code and all that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Bye.